Welcome to Adeptus On Air, the show where we examine how individuals and companies make decisions that drive their business and personal success. Each week, we connect with notable professionals who pull back the curtain on the industries that Adeptus has been on the cutting edge of for the last 30 years, including music, sports, and entertainment, as well as new emerging markets. Welcome to another episode of Adeptus on Air. I am your host, Mike Hoffman, or should I say I am your co-host, because for the first time, I have a co-host with me. Uh, as we talked about last week, welcome Ashley Green. Ash, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm excited. Um, you know, I made that was a that was a start. That was good. So you want to see if you're still excited 45 minutes after uh, you know after we go through this, and uh, I'm looking forward to having you. Looking forward to the different dynamic. Uh, unfortunately, I could say some of a whole different generation. So uh, you know, kind of get your perspective on things and. Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to having a comedian for my first podcast because I'm sure I'm going to give him a lot of material. Just be kind, okay? We'll say I'm pretty funny. But, um, save, save the blonde jokes, though, because those are played out. I'll make you deal. I'll save the blonde jokes if you save the bald joke. Uh, I don't know if I can commit to that. Well, listen, you haven't seen time. You want to get hairstyle to me, so you got to be careful with that because you're going to take shots at two of us instead of just one, so. Well. So with that, Let's get started, and uh, we're going to connect Trent. Let's just give him a second to connect. Uh, I think we have Trent. Trent, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming in. Uh, Trent is a Trent Hudson is a cartoonist, entrepreneur, and comedian. Best known for making cartoons as part of Riot Comedy, which he founded with his brothers. He also worked for likes of Comedy Central, ESPN, and LOL Network. He is an award-winning entrepreneur who founded Forma. Did I say that right? Forma? That's correct. You got it. Which is a coffee company that makes coffee from roasted date seeds as a healthy alternative. Interesting. R- ran- almost almost random how, you know, cartoons and the coffee alternative. I got to tell you, I don't even like coffee without the so I'm not sure how I would do with the, <laughs> with the healthy alternative, Mike. Well, it's yeah. caffeine-free, isn't it? It's correct. Got, it's yeah. caffeine-free. Yeah, okay. that, that was why I started it, because I, I love coffee, honestly, like, but caffeine doesn't really do anything for me except kind of make my chest feel tight. Mm. So, um, but it, I mean, I could drink a cup of coffee right now and go back to bed, no problem. So I just, I just like the routine. I like the the ritual of it. Um, but a crazy story is I actually um, had a heart attack when I was 20. So no. random freak kind of thing. I had two aneurysms in my LAD. So for anyone listening who, if you maybe don't know what an aneurysm is, basically your artery wall kind of gets weak and it balloons. And then the blood can't flow straight through. It'll kind of get in that ballooned area and tumble and it'll clap. So that's what happened. So the bottom half of my LAD, there's no blood flowing through there. Mm-hmm. And which is kind of crazy because they call the LAD the widow maker. Typically, if you have a heart attack in that part of your heart, it's game over for you. But before I had my heart attack, um, my heart detected that there was, you know, some kind of blockage there. I wasn't getting adequate blood flow. So my heart developed feeder arteries around my LAD, and now I have completely normal blood flow. Um, and this is kind of important. 15 months after I had my heart attack, I actually had another one. So the second clock closed up. So there, again, no blood flowing through my LAD. But um, yeah, I did a checkup a couple of years ago. We did like the 3D imaging. We did running on the treadmill, EKG, mm-hmm. ultrasound, and everything looked good. And whenever you have a heart attack, whatever damage is done to your heart, that's permanent. Your heart doesn't recover from those bruises or whatever damage is done. But luckily, in my case, even after two heart attacks, I had almost no damage. When we were doing the ultrasound, it took the technician like 45 minutes to even find any kind of damage done at all. So very blessed, very lucky. Um, But that's kind of how the Korma thing started. That was the catalyst because, again, I love coffee, but it doesn't love me back. It'll make my chest feel a little tight. So Mm -hmm. I just, you know. Had to, had to come up with an alternative. Interesting. I don't know if you realized the profound thing that you said um, when you were telling that story. Um, when you said that, you know, once your your something happens to your heart, it doesn't heal. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up on that. Well, we we, 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 we we can heal from other ailments, but not not the physical ones. I I, I think. Um, but but what yeah, the they, emotional they just, ones. I, I'll say the emotional ones. I, I think they heal, but they leave scars, though. They leave scars. Mm-hmm. There's. Definitely some scar tissue on in those kind of uh, yeah. <laughs> but listen, issues. Quickly, Ashley, you have a comedian. 
you're looking forward to meeting. You're already talking about two near death experience. You're talking about broke parts, and we're like literally only six minutes into this. And now I just <laughs> want to go. Those things can honestly be funny, and believe it or not, the whole when I had the first heart attack, even when I was in the hospital for almost a week, not knowing what's going to happen or what the future holds, me and my brothers were still cracking jokes about it. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, yeah, it's it's funny. I mean, you survived. You're good. You were 20. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's I'm the thing. Scared. It's all it's all good. So you can make jokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't have been as funny if the result was different. So it's, uh, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it was, I, I don't think so. I don't, I, I don't know if I can, you know, speak I don't for think he would have been yeah. laughing right now if the results were different. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Say. You wouldn't be here. Talking to ourselves, actually, kind of hard laps. So this worked good. <laughs> well, for many reasons, I'm glad you made it through okay. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. No, that that's a really, really cool story. But um, coffee as a ritual, and each lover takes some coffee. I had yeah. I sip coffee in McIntyre. Then. Really? Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Because of any health reasons, whatever, you know, grow up. But again, you know, I wanted to go to you. My mom had one of those instant coffee makers. So... Mm-hmm. It would like start making coffee like a half hour before we came down and like come down at school my entire kitchen smelled coffee and <laughs> yeah the, the smell was just so strong and so turned off by it mm-hmm. and i never had any interest in science so in college when everyone's taking coffee for finals i tried mellow yellow mellow yellow was like that <laughs> that that's what got me through it you never heard of I, it. I, 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 I would rather drink almost anything than a soda and especially mellow yellow not to knock your taste but I don't know. Mellow yellow. Yeah, I'm just saying. They know the song from the Gap commercial. When, when was the last time I even heard someone mention a mellow, mellow yellow? It's been 20 years. <laughs> uh, once again, I was in college about 30 years ago, so that's correct. I'm surprised we were able to have kids after all that mellow yellow. You know what I mean? People quit drinking mellow yellow in the 90s for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I ate. It was the early 90s. I like mellow yellow things. <laughs> yeah. You still but, drink mellow yellow? You still a fan of it? I don't think I've had it probably since probably like my finals in college. I don't know. Oh, okay, cool. I know. Yeah. Oh, to be honest with you, I don't even think I like yeah. it. Um, that was my, you know, that was before these energy drinks. That was before Red Wolves. So that was mm. key. Yeah. Great. Well, now I know what I'm getting you for your birthday tomorrow. It is. <laughs> <laughs> your birthday is tomorrow. Happy early birthday. It is tomorrow. So I just want to spend it with your friends. So it's perfect. And I have nice. My, my, mine's in six days. Mine's next Wednesday. Oh, really? Yeah, mine's next Monday. <laughs> July fifteenth. Very Dang. nice. Very nice. Cool. Yeah, well, a bunch of cancers here. Yeah, that's the best Zodiac way to be. Sign, I mean. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I'm a whole decade plus out of yet. I, I look at I'm looking at the trend. They're looking all dapper. I'm, I think I'm a good decade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that dapper. Just you know, white white linen for this for the summer. Stay I cool. I think I can sell my shirt being that. Oh, cut cut on. <laughs> I, 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 work, I, work, I work hard to be able to wear the shirt like this. I, w- I work hard for that. <laughs> so give us a little background. Because obviously, you know, you, you've got a bunch of things. So obviously the, the coffee top, I think, being later in your career. But obviously, mm-hmm. the Dunley, the cartoonist, the comedian, which are similar, but also different. You know, two different yeah. artistic parts of the brain. So now talk about, you know, how you kind of got into what I'll call the entertainment world in total. Like, and how you kind of branched off into both things. So the entertainment thing started, you know, I, I have four brothers. I'm the middle child, uh, no girls in the family. And the two youngest are twins. And there's only about a two, two and a half year gap between each set of kids, you know. So there's five of us within seven years. So our household was chaos. It was a lot of fighting, but mostly making fun of each other. A lot of that. And if somebody, <laughs> our household was always like this. If somebody, if one of the brothers starts making fun of another brother and they're like really roasting him, we don't come to the aid of the one who's getting roasted. We all just jump on and attack and you'll, then you'll just have four people making fun of you and just roasting you and just, so you, you had to get to a point to where you can just sit there and be roasted and feel nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Um, So me and my brothers, we have this kind of raunchy sense of humor where we think everything is funny. Nothing, absolutely nothing is off limits for the humor for us. Um, And it was a lot of, you know, Just us growing up being kind of, you know, mean to each other to some degree, but a lot of sitting around cracking jokes and saying, man, we should make cartoons or we should have our own show or whatever it may be. Um, So. So, yeah, it was, you know, a lot of making fun of each other. And then, you know, I was um, working as a financial advisor in 2013 and worked for a really good company, worked with a lot of really great people, hated my job, 
wasn't wasn't down with it didn't like it um was not for me so at that point that was when i decided i'm gonna pursue comedy in some fashion whether it's cartoons or stand-up and um all the brothers were on board with doing that too i called my brother one day and i'm like yo i'm gonna quit my job and uh make cartoons and he's like damn like we've always talked about doing this we should do it so that day we literally just put our heads down and started running and we got some uh, animation software taught ourselves how to use it from just watching mm -hmm. tutorials online and basically as soon as we got to a point to where we could make characters move around <laughs> we started putting content on youtube and uh -huh. it wasn't any good at first it was terrible um honestly like unwatchable but the stuff we make now is like tv quality mm -hmm. and i'm a big advocate of if you want to do something just jump in if you wait until you're ready, you're going to wait too long and you're never actually going to be ready. You kind of get ready by throwing yourself in the fire. You know, um, my thing is, so we started putting content on YouTube in June or July of 2015. So we took literally, you know, end of 2013 till mid 2015 was just sitting in the shadows and learning how to animate and how to write and concepting a show and teaching ourselves all these things. Um, and then we put stuff on YouTube. But our thing was like, OK, we can either start putting stuff on YouTube now whenever it's, you know, we can it's good enough to get people to maybe tune in mm -hmm. or we can wait, you know, another two, three months until we're quote unquote ready. But then it's like you just wasted two to three months when you could have been gaining fans from that. Right. So that's kind of how I look at things, even if you're going to start and it's not ready. I mean, even look at like Joe Rogan's podcast. This dude is the biggest podcaster in the world. But the first episode is like low quality, unwatchable it's you know but that's how you start so you just got to jump in so it was <laughs> a lot of jump in and you you just figure it out as you go and that's kind of how i've always been and that's how it was with the coffee company too the coffee company when i started i didn't know anything about coffee i knew i liked it but i don't, I didn't know what a i didn't know the difference between a latte and a cappuccino i didn't know none of these things i didn't even know like what some of the different methods of making coffee were mm -hmm. and when i first started the company i would have people message me you know, they'd send the email to our website and be like, is this, can I, is, will this work in a French press or will this work in this and this? And, and then they started, you know, like real coffee connoisseurs are buying my coffee. I'm like, okay, I got to like know these things. So every time someone would message me, I would just immediately get on Google and, you know, see what this is and mm -hmm. see if it would be compatible with our size of our coffee, the cut of it. And then I would message back. Like I knew the answers the whole time. <laughs> and I think, you know, that, that worked. And now I'm knowledgeable though, but at the beginning, I didn't know anything about coffee. Didn't know nothing. No. And then how stand up rants off of the uh, the cartoon? The, the stand up I actually started doing before cartoons. And I haven't been near as active lately because we've been so busy with the cartoons. And there's also a part of me that's kind of like, <clears throat> I struggle with like wanting to do stand up, mm -hmm. but also not wanting people to know who I am. <laughs> um. or, or at least like not, not have like personal fandom like that. Like I love having the cartoon fans, they'll message us, you know, we get amazing messages from people that are like, thank you for making these like you all like make my day every day watching this. I love your content. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like being able to be low key, not have, you know, I, I think being famous would have been really awesome, like 20 years ago. Yeah. But in today's day and age, I have no desire to be famous. Yeah. So I've, I've reeled back the stand up a little bit and put more a ton of focus on the cartoons. And the last year, year and a half has been absolutely bonkers for us with the with the cartoons. Could you absolutely? That's awesome. That's that's interesting. That's an interesting shift. What you said, I wonder, you know, especially with, you know, fame and celebrity and everything is so savage these days. Thinking about how you're expressing yourself essentially through your cartoons or I guess mm -hmm. I don't know, we could call it people might start expressing themselves in different ways, like through avatars or through like those types of things, um, mm -hmm. you know, and not so much putting themselves out on the front lines because of the things that you mentioned, um, you know, being challenging to be famous up that that'll be an interesting to, to watch that shift. See, um, you know, if that's yeah. something that manifests. So the entertainment world is getting really, really different. And fame now is you know, the people that are the most famous are influencers and streamers now. Like, I mean, if you really think about it, like when was the last time we had a big name actor come on the scene that we all know who's like, I mean, it seems like most of the people who are like the big names have been in the game for so long. I mean, the only person who kind of comes to mind for me within the last handful of years is, I don't know, maybe Tom Holland. 
But then whenever you ask like kids, like who's famous, like who's the most famous entertainers that you watch, these kids are like, they're, they're naming TikTok and Instagram people and streamers, like the Twitch streamers, the kick streamers, they're naming all these people. And uh-huh. when you ask the people who want to work in entertainment, what do you want to do? None of them say they want to be an actor anymore. It's not like that, like it used to be. Yeah. You know, there's so many people who are like, I want to be an influencer. I want to be a streamer. Um, and those have their perks because you you can control everything. Whereas if you're an actor, unless you're producing your own content, you're kind of at the mercy of the casting director, the director, the people who organize everything. And, and you have to hope that they like what you bring more than what this other person brings to this character. Whereas you look at someone like um, Kai Sennett, who I don't watch his stream, but he's super famous and everyone knows who this kid is now. And he does streams with like Kevin Hart and major superstars. Mm -hmm. Um, But he's in a position where, you know, he can control what he does and doesn't have to rely on getting work and can just keep keep the money coming in. So I think that's a huge thing for this new generation, especially these younger kids who look at the world and see how, you know, working a lot of most jobs are unfulfilling. Mm -hmm. You're at, you know, you have someone telling you what to do and this and that. And it's like you have not as much control over your life as you want. So I think that shift in entertainment is it's it's got a lot of pros, some cons, but I think it's more good than bad for sure. I'm I'm a big fan of controlling your own destiny at all costs. And that's where you follow these uh these influencers and we and we go on with the accounting side is mm-hmm. they have so many different streams of income come whether they yeah. have to Amazon. That's that's a huge link for them. They're posting links and they don't have it on store and they're not like five. Ah, so they're just saying, I like this, they're posting yeah. it and they're making that. Plus they're getting their regular door to deals from, you know, these companies. And, you know, I, I love phone with them yesterday and she was actually opening a bunch of packages. Why? Because these companies just send her all a bunch of packages, opening the chill promote then. And, and the amount of money that's coming from these things, you know, I have these, you know, girls in their early 20s. They're not doing the only fans or anything like that. They're just streaming what I'll call relatively wholesome content. Mm-hmm. A million dollars a year on Warby. Yeah. Connecting not a lot. So why not? If you could be more of those lucky ones, is there probably millions of people out there exploring into this? Yeah, if, absolutely. Those lucky ones, like God, you could set yourself up for life in like four or five years of not even more. Right. I wish I would have had this kind of opportunity because when I was in high school, social media wasn't like this. I graduated in 08. So that was at a point where we were starting to get introduced to it. Okay. But it wasn't like lucrative opportunities. If that would have been the case, I'd have been making cartoons. I'd have been learning how to animate when I was like 12. I'd have, <laughs> I'd have been trying to figure this out. Um, but media yeah, with your cartoons, are you using that? That's yeah, fine. yeah, we're we're very social media heavy. We we do episodes almost every day that are we, we shoot for about thirty seconds or less. Um, and yeah, every day we put them on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Our handle is Riot Comedy everywhere you look. So, but yeah, the last year, year and a half, we've just started to blow up and gain fifty to a hundred thousand followers every month. So it's been a, <laughs> pretty wild the last last little while in here. But I think a lot of comedians, talk about comedians, I think a lot of us now are using social media. Yeah. In a very effective way. I'll, I'll look at more of the honest guys that are like, you know, mm-hmm. he was struggling, I think, to, you know, on TV or whatever, but then some of his clips just fought and went viral. Yeah. And uh-huh. now a lot of thing out there. And I think in interviews, I believe I've heard him say, he credits social media. Yeah. For him, really. I, 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 I think that's, that's the very best thing for stand up comedy right now is. Because whenever you're promoting on social media, mo- most comedians, l- like 90% of comedians, they have a five-minute act and they have a 10-minute act and they do the same act all around the country everywhere they go. Mm-hmm. And that's great. And that does require talent, but not as much as being funny on social media where you're promoting daily. Because you got to be funny and bring real funny every single day and talk about different things. Whereas I think I- I've seen comedians who aren't funny do acts that are decent and i'm like okay this guy read uh like this book about stand-up that i read and like i'm like in the book like but- giving examples of like everything that he did in his act i'm like okay this guy knows the tactics but he's not actually funny enough to be a comedian whereas now you're seeing separation you have guys like matt rife blew up on social media andrew schultz you know one of the one of my favorite current comedians right now he did the same thing blew up on social media and, he, and those guys were 
guys that were being funny every day and not doing the same jokes over and over. So you're starting to see like some really good comedians emerge out of this. Um, Rene Vaca is another one like this uh, Mexican dude from here, here in L.A. Hilarious. And so you're starting to see like a really good shift in comedy, which is a really good thing. And it's um, fa fantastic because they like to, you know, the studios and the executives like to pick and choose what we watch and they're not very good at picking comedians honestly like <laughs> so now that we have like the market determining which comedians are rising to the top the the game is a lot better comedy's in such a better place now than it was five years ago people not 10 years ago people are to the media and it's comedians is the problem because they're you're getting the this and they're getting the you know the, the genuine how clever and how funny are these comedians are because they're kind of thinking off the cuff as the flows that you said that five or yeah, ten exactly i have no desire to see certain comedians and i love comedians mm -hmm. in their act because i've seen them on social media right so i've seen it i go on youtube and I can watch it but when it's a lot of crown work every every piece every segment is different some are and others but you know yeah. you're wide on the situation that's being presented to you from an audience member and how you feed up with that Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you know, a lot of comedians, we've already seen their act. So we want to see something different. When you know the punchlines are coming, it doesn't matter how funny it is. If you've seen it once already, you're only going to, you know, get a chuckle out of it. You're not going to, you know, be splitting your side laughing so hard like when you get something, something new and fresh. So you, you saw stand up as first before your cartoons. How did your stand up and your approach to your routines influence your cartoons? It's very, very similar comedy for sure. Me and my brothers definitely have um, a, a brand at Riot Comedy that's that's raunchy and we like to say things that are a little provocative, but we always um, keep it authentic. You know, you'll see a lot of comedians do shock value jokes, yeah. um, things that are, you know, that you can tell they wrote it into the script just to try to get a reaction. Mm -hmm. We never do that. Everything we do is authentic to ourselves and to the characters that we create. So... And I think that's a big reason that we've been growing so fast is because that resonates with our audience. And the audience can tell when you're being authentic versus when you're being, you know, either reaching for clickbait or whatever it may be. So when, when you bring real authenticity and you're giving the people what they want and they seem to like our style of humor, um, it's great. But, yeah, our, it's uh, definitely it's it's not kid friendly, but it's not too like the stuff we post on social media is more family friendly because we got to kind of work around the algorithm. But on our uh -huh. website on riotcomedy.com, it's like anything goes, no holds barred, ri ridiculous scenarios, and um, all the you know adult situations you can find yourself getting into in real life, and then just amplified for a cartoon. Sure. NSFW, you know what that means, Mike? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Love you say it. Maybe I don't. Not safe for work. I think like. <laughs> Our server would block it. <laughs> I'd be the the right company website, you might you might have some trouble trouble watching, but the stuff on social media is usually usually pretty safe for you. Mm -hmm. I won't be getting an email from HR if I go to that. Nah, <laughs> nah. You you can you can share the social media clips around the office. We we definitely have some things on the website though that are like a little a little more, but nothing nothing gross or like vulgar. It's just you know over the top raunchy comedy. Again, mm -hmm. everything everything is funny to me and my brothers. Like there's no joke we won't make. I like it. So how are you leveraging that? Because obviously you're in this as a career, you know, mm -hmm. to and so forth. And obviously when you're posting the free content on social media is well, then you're exposing. But obviously mm -hmm. you're not necessarily getting monetary rewards to like from me watching your TikTok clip or you you know, watching you on Instagram or whatever. So how are you mm -hmm. this business and monetizing it where it's a career? So recently, Instagram started letting you monetize. So we, we make money from Instagram and Facebook. So Meta, um, we do a pretty decent amount of YouTube revenue um, for our YouTube ads. And then we also have sponsors that sponsor our content. We do sponsored content um, fairly regularly. We actually just uh, finished a deal. We were working with a like a fantasy sports picks uh one of those players for the last nine months. And then, um, so that's expired now. So now we're free agents again in, in that world. Um, but, uh, yeah, so sponsors and, and then we do merchandise also. So we, we have a lot of merchandise where you'll see like the characters in our show wear certain outfits. And then we have those shirts on our website every now and again, if we have something that's good that the fans are asking for. So yeah, a handful of different revenue streams on here, but yeah, it's, it's a little different now because, 
a lot of the social platforms have started to let you monetize because it's kind of one of those things where like if your competitor does it, you have to do it too. So if TikTok is going to let you make money on TikTok, why mm. would you spend a ton of time posting on Instagram when you can flood people to your TikTok and try to get people to leave your Instagram page and go follow you on TikTok to make money there? So then it's like, okay, now now the competitors have to do it. So now everyone has to do it. So that's kind of the transition that we're sliding into now with everybody allowing you to monetize. Yeah, and uh, that's exactly the shift that I'm seeing with certain people is they're focusing, they're actually shifting their focus to certain platforms because for different people, all different content. Yeah. <clears throat> Just work better for what they're trying to do. Yeah. A few years ago, Instagram didn't have as much of the video content similar on TikTok or Facebook. I think yeah. the thing they call reels and was your relatively new content because I think that was in response to their top, you know, kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's it's copycat game all the way around. I mean, and that's not even just social media. That's business in general. Even in e- even in sports, you'll see whatever team wins the championship next year, teams are reloading, trying to build their team the way that team that just won built their team. Like no. you, you see it everywhere. So what, whatever works. And honestly, that's kind of how so when we first started making cartoons we our idea was to copy what musicians were doing so from in like the 2000s the early 2000s to the mid 2010s rappers and other musicians that are like especially especially in the rap uh genre mixtapes were everything like and so we kind of copied Lil Wayne and his move was whenever he was the biggest rapper in the world this dude was making music every damn day for us and putting out mixtapes and songs and just he was flooding just so much content for us to listen to to where Mm -hmm. everyone was like man this dude is the best he's the best ever he's the best right now (laughs) so we stole that and we just started working so hard when we were on youtube when we were first learning our episodes were a little bit longer but we were doing two episodes a week um which was like really exhausting we were doing episodes on monday and thursday so as soon as we posted Monday's episode, we would blast it on social media, do a little promo, and then get to work on Thursday's episode and start the cycle over and then work on that for three days nonstop. Thursday's episode's out, start the cycle over. Yep. And um, so we were just trying to flood as much content as we could. And that helped us grow really fast. That got the attention of Comedy Central. Mm-hmm. And so this is what this did for us. Six months after, six months after we started making our first content, we were in Comedy Central's office with them, wow. meeting with them. And two weeks after that, we had a deal done to to do a web series with them. And we, we did that with them for two years. Wow. So, co- co- copying people that are already successful works. So th- shout out Lil Wayne for inspiring us to <laughs> do it the way we did it. And then that Comedy Central deal literally catal- was the catalyst for everything else that we've done. Mm-hmm. Because once you work with Comedy Central, when you're reaching out to people saying, Hey, we make shows, yada, yada. We do cartoons. We've worked with Comedy Central. Mm-hmm. Well, they're listening now. They're going to take your meeting if Comedy Central has worked with you for two years. And then so then we just, you know, leverage that. And then we worked with LOL Network. We've worked with Showtime. We worked with ESPN now. So now when you're saying these kind of names in rooms, mm-hmm. people take you very serious. So, but yeah, the Comedy Central deal was everything for us. And honestly, like, n- not even just from the sake of leveraging our careers, but they made us so much better writers. Like yeah. we, we, we were decent before we linked up with them, but working with them for two years was, it, it was a master class in writing for television and writing stories a proper way. So we, you know, again, worked super hard to get there, spent a year and a half just learning how to do this, you know, and that, that was the hardest part because when you're spending that much time just learning how to animate, it's very mm-hmm. tedious coming up with shows and that is fun and the joke sessions, the writing sessions are great. But when you're just learning how to animate every day for a year and a half, you don't, you're not gaining any fans. No one even knows you're doing this work yet. That that's the part where it's like, okay. And then, and then once you start making that first content, then it gets really exciting and then you can just, you know, run off that momentum. But yeah, it was, it took us, took us a long time to get to where we are now. And we worked for free for a lot of years. Yeah. It's good. You're not doing that anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it was exhausting, but it took it really took us like I mean we worked for free. I mean obviously like working with Comedy Central we got paid, but as far as like building Riot Comedy, mm-hmm. I mean we were making cartoons for ourselves for years for like like close to a decade, like seven eight years with not hardly any revenue coming in. You know, strike a small deal here or there, but 
not enough to to do it not even enough for one of us to do it full time let alone three of us to do it full time so it was a did you enjoy watching cartoons as a kid like was that oh man that that's why we make cartoons now so, so me and my two brothers that i do this with our our favorite show is south park all three of us ah. and south park is the greatest show of all time in my opinion no one will ever convince me otherwise um but i also and, and so south park came out when i was like seven or eight years old and i used to get in trouble for watching it whenever i wasn't supposed to be um but whenever i was like a little little tyke i remember the simpsons was really big in our house and i think it was on like every it was on sundays so every mm -hmm. sunday night i remember being like little kid you know three four five years old and we always wanted to you know our pops would always yell from the living room the simpsons are getting on the couch we'd all run in there and watch the simpsons get on the couch because they do it different every week right yeah so and then we'd watch the simpsons so that was kind of like what started it and then once south park came out it was like game over this show is like this show is everything and then there's a lot of other great cartoons. I love Family Guy. I love American Dad. I love Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. um, a few other ones, but yeah, those are those are the main ones that are. And even still, like I don't really watch hardly any shows. Mm -hmm. um, I I mostly just watch the the new South Park episodes when they make them. Family Guy, Rick and Morty, American Dad. That's really like still all I watch, except for I watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That's uh, that's, that, that's about it anymore, man. And whatever whatever show Danny McBride has on TV, I watch that. So. <laughs> I'm actually in Charleston, South Carolina, where they film, um, you know, the Righteous Gemstones. Hey, yeah, that, that show is fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. I uh, I watch it a lot. It's, all that's all, like, all, all his shows are great. I, I just those? recently went to a mega church here, sort of like just <laughs> nice. because I like the Righteous Gemstones last Sunday. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's an experience up. for sure. Yeah. So were you going to church before this or you, you wanted to experience like a big grand cathedral or, or you like felt like you actually like wanted to go to church to go to church? Well, one of my friends is a member and he sings there mm -hmm. and, you know, he's very much like into the culture. Um, okay, so cool. I wanted to go see it for myself. I mean, it, it's great. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. I mean, it's like the show, yeah. right? You know, yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I was just thinking the entire time how funny it would be to like have Danny McBride walk in to like, you know, one of these big <laughs> churches. It just... <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be hysterical it'd be really everyone funny. everyone in the church might go to hell if danny mcbride shows up and starts <laughs> that's it doing <laughs> the thing right? <laughs> right but i love his shows like eastbound and down is legendary obviously kenny powers is like one of the greatest mm -hmm. tv characters ever um vice principals was great so whatever he does next i'm looking forward to that too yeah but yeah mo mostly cartoons for me even still mm -hmm. like the sections obviously and and that one i think really kind of things the <laughs> Because they were more yeah. like he took your age for more of your kid cartoons. I yeah. was began to evolve it, and I think soon followed after my Beavis and Bud. And I think yeah. Beavis and Bud had, which is now that's old when I was in college, that was the big praise. Yeah. I think it was Mike Judge who created that. And I think, yeah, yeah, Mike Judge. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, that's same, same, same as King of the Hill. King of the Hill solid too. Yeah. yeah. King of the Hill. And that was it, because at that point in time, cartoons now took on adult content. And I think I was like, yeah. hi, we. Simpsons began to, I think, Beavis and Bud and really pushed that needle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Simpsons was like, adults could watch it, but it was for the family. Yeah. Whereas Be Beavis and Butthead was for adults. Well, then. You know, it was, yeah, wasn't that's the cartoon I used to get in trouble for watching. There you go. Beavis and Butthead, yeah. <laughs> and then they had a video game. And you'd uh, go remember, around. I'm, do you remember I the remember video the game? Beavis and Butthead video game, yeah. Are you yeah. talking about the one on the computer? Yeah, and you went around hitting people with bedpans. My mom could yes. not take and there, and there was also a level in it where you could like get on top of the school and spit on people that were yeah. walking on the sidewalk underneath you. And every now and again, the principal would walk by. It's like all of our got... dreams, like just the worst it was, thing you could it was, possibly it do most, at that age. It was a foul game because when you're spitting on the principal, you have like regular spit and then you also have loogies, which <laughs> like is a hilarious concept. And it's, it's very 90s kind of humor and comedy yeah. in this video game. But I remember this was on like Windows 95 probably. I used to play it at my aunt's house on her computer all the time. Yeah. But yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> the Beavis and Butthead video game. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> like, yeah, so, so I think I think that point on, that's not it where cartoons allowed all of the stuff that you yeah. see there. Yeah. 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 You so should make a video game next. That should be an excellent we, we've, 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 we've thought about it. It's um, it's funny because I actually, we started a video game company like seven years ago, probably. It didn't go anywhere, but we had a great idea that we still may end up doing. So I can't tell you too much about it, but it was a, it was a mobile racing game. Um, but it was, it was genius how we were going to make money on it. But, um, 
I gotta keep it to myself because I'm gonna steal the idea. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like probably... road rash meets like spitting loogies on people. Kinda, yeah. It'd be it'd be like um like a like a two D platform Mario Kart. Nice. Yeah. But loogies could be one of the weapons eventually, maybe because we're we, yeah, we don't had, have a, had a whole different yeah yeah we had a whole different concept for it back in the day, but now we're talking about making it with our original characters, so it'll be like riot 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 racing or something like that, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. But um, yeah. So that that's that's not something we've ever ruled out. We would love. We've always been big video game people. Mm-hmm. Although, like, full disclosure, I don't ever really play video games anymore because my two younger brothers are really good at all video games. It doesn't matter what it is, mm-hmm. and I'm a sore loser. I I have no problem admitting it. So if I if I'm gonna lose all the time at these video games, I'd rather just not play. It ain't that serious. I don't I don't I don't enjoy video games enough to lose at them while I play. <laughs> Yeah, I always say the only game I play is the game of life, and that's the one I'm trying to win. So <laughs> I, feel I don't that. play video games. I don't play board games. Don't ask me to play any of that stuff. I get so like, bored with board games, and honestly, video games too. I, I get bored with a lot of things now. It's not, it's not well, the same as when you were Everything I mean, is entertaining. You're pivoting a lot, you know, yeah. and doing a lot of new right. things. But, I just did yeah. one of those top filter rankings last week, and I just ranked my top ten favorite board games of all time. So now. How you know, now how Pope brings like your sightings then? <laughs> I mean, that checks out. That checks hey, out. Like, I'll, I'll say Monopoly is cool. I, I like Monopoly. That's about the only board game you'll find me playing. Monopoly is top notch. I, I gotta support my list now because Monopoly, you know, have you seen those like rankings on TikTok where you don't know what's coming mm-hmm. next? So yeah, yeah. pick my favorite games and then I left my bottoms and Monopoly was the tip that popped up. So I had to justify why I had it rated so low. Now, that was <laughs> And the only time I started playing or completely the game took so long that finally after an hour and a half, like, all right, let's just stop right now. Yep. Good. All we're doing is go around playing each other. I'm <laughs> interested to know what number one is. Parcheesy? You're going to have to go on to my TikTok and find out for yourself. I don't want to go on your TikTok. <laughs> it's just football. What is your What is your favorite game? I'm pulled up right now. I honestly don't remember. When I remember my game, <laughs> you have to realize something. Talk to you. So a lot of my board game memories are probably like Mall yeah. Madness. That wasn't a choice. No, don't tell me it's Clue. It's probably Clue. It seems like well, a Clue guy. Clue was Risk. A... Sorry, I gotta watch it. Battleship. That was a one I don't remember something. Keep looking back. Guess who? Guess who? Looks like you're you're the like old guy with the glasses. Sooks. He played. Wait, the problem with it, it's the like same game over and over. But I do have great memories of Guess Who, like kids. But I had that rated like the seven area. First game that came up was Star. Now, sorry, that's the most exciting game, but sorry, again, that was like kids. And we mm-hmm. kind of and then we had the princess version of Sorry, and then we had the Disney version of Sorry. We had all these different things. So I that ended up. It checks yeah. out because you've got a wife and two daughters, so you probably just say sorry all the time. I've never heard of them. It's the only time I ever come out of my house about the one saying it. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's why you like the game. No, you said you play the game of life. Well, the board game I had rated number three. I do. I love that game. That game. I, that game. I will. I'll play. That I've never I'll played. Play. Never. Never played that one before. No, we are playing it right now. You know. Yeah. This is just like well, the talking about this pretty risky. I had risk. The, the real game I enjoy. The real game of life I enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Risk was not. And chess just popped in at seven. To, not that anyone cares. You know what? Okay. Ch- ch- chess is actually number one. Chess. I don't. I don't consider like a typical. It is a board game, but right. it's different you know it's it's a it's a real thinker's game chess chess is actually number one it's way better than monopoly i'd, I'd play chess any day yeah the problem is as you said i don't play it enough where i'm not very good at it so i'm playing it i'm using it all <laughs> yeah i'm fighting to lose right to lose. so i guess so, so just to update you now trivial pursuit was five it's travel six chess was seven blue is coming in i believe at number four i totally forgot what number one is i don't remember mm-hmm. This is the, I'm excited to watch them. <laughs> yeah. Actually, as soon as we go, Ashley's not really on social media that much. We just finally convinced her to have create Instagram. So she won't be telling. So she can't even go on my TikTok and watch my TikTok, but they just even have TikTok. I, I don't I have know, a personal you TikTok. Like, so look at your TikTok. Oh, by the way, who was number one? We just realized. I remember. Nice. Just, yeah. The library and the candlestick. Yeah. You That's know, you. Colonel Mustard. Yeah. With, yeah exactly. Colonel Mustard. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be your new nickname, Colonel Mustard. There's, I, I remember why I was doing this. I try to be funny, easily to look forward. So, I think the only character in the team of mine was Colonel Mustard. Colonel Mustard. 
with the lead pipe. And that's the probably the only character I can name also is Colonel hey. Mustard. Exactly. Because like this one or something, I forgot if one was a miss or a miss is like one to say like Merm. Oh, the other one has high battleship. Yeah, I called that one. You seem like a battleship guy. Yeah. I don't remember the last I don't think minutes. I've played battleship since third grade. But I thought it was cool to look here for my birthday at the end of tomorrow. I got electric battleship and none of them mm. had that ability to play yours. So you'd like pull the game and you'd get a noise like, you know, if you hit this, you got those hits and that was pretty cool. Now, let's face it, when you're, you're all playing a game and someone hates you, you can make the noise yourself. So yeah. now it's, I did two batteries that the, the game did a prank. We're going to have to get you a laugh track, too. I, well, no one else likes it funny, so it'd be nice if I could just kind of hit a button while I find myself up if you just sit there. So yeah. Yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, your wife would hate me. Now, <laughs> up the yell, uh, never that. But uh, let's go on to the coffee thing. got a few more minutes left. You serious? Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. you just to make the coffee company based out of date. Now, obviously, yeah. And obviously, you said it tastes pretty similar to coffee. Mm-hmm. How did you guys realize that that would happen? Because I would think that cocoa, which I think is what coffee's made out of, and date mm-hmm. pulled off two different distinct flavors. So how was it able to resemble pot or like traditional so, coffee? So the date seed, when you roast it up and grind it like a coffee seed, it, it'll... It, the date seeds are super bitter. Um, they're not quite as sweet, but the, our coffee's definitely sweeter than regular coffee. Um, so our classic blend, I think, is the closest thing to coffee that you're going to get out of any coffee alternative as far as the taste goes. I, I've had a lot of different ones, and I've never had something that tastes as close to coffee as ours. So our classic blend actually has a little bit of chicory root in it. So chicory root is um, another bitter herb. It's really popular in New Orleans. They add it to their coffee there. Is that where you're so, from, New Orleans? Uh, I'm actually from a small town in Missouri. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, mi- middle of nowhere. It's all good. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so when you get like about the right blend between date seeds and chicory, you can get a nice bitterness to it with a subtle sweetness that's fairly close to coffee. But um, I mean, it's still not quite coffee. Although I usually, if I drink coffee, I do cream and some sugar. But if mm-hmm. I do date coffee, I just throw a little bit of cream in it or just drink it straight like that. And it's it's great. So, And then um, we, we have a light roast that's just date seeds. If you're looking for something like that, quite a bit sweeter. It's almost like it's almost like a coffee tea kind of thing. And then um, we have a hazelnut one as well. Have you ever made like a pun on like coffee date? I've <laughs> not. I've not. But uh, everybody suggests it. So either either sure. it's not so, so if, if if everybody suggested it, it's either a brilliant idea or a terrible idea, and I don't know which one it is yet. That's, <laughs> that's well. Any yeah. oh like yeah, said, that's up for debate. It's it low is, hanging fruit. It is low hanging fruit. Yeah, did huh? that? Yeah, he just roasted the dude. See? That was also low hanging. <laughs> hey, hey! I heard the bald jokes comment earlier too. Whenever it was just you two on, I thought, I thought we were silenced, Michelle. <laughs> I, I had I had audio access. I know. <laughs> Most of the bald jokes that I hear, I'm actually making myself. So I would figure if I make a joke, then so no one else can make them. So I usually just drop the bald jokes. You know, no problem. Well, I threw the blonde it, joke from the beginning too. So like we, you know. I, I don't. I don't ever. I don't ever make jokes about myself. But if someone else does, again, I, I grew up with four brothers who we always make fun of each other. So I, I'm quick with this. So I'll, I'll hit you back like real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a pretty eclectic background you have. I'm looking at the stuff you have behind you, and usually, you know, you're a team guy or you're a sci-fi guy or you're a sports guy. But I see it. I think that's is that Albert Pujols. I see look back. Yeah. Yeah. I I grew up near St. Louis, so Cardinals fan. So. But I see a Michael. That's, 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 that, that's that's the greatest baseball player of the last thirty years. I don't care what nobody says. Right, he's up there for sure. But then the I last see thirty years. Last thirty years, he's number one. I don't care what nobody says. He's number one. Ain't, 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 ain't nobody played baseball since the year two thousand that I would take over Albert Pujols if I'm drafting a player from year one. Nobody, me personally. But yeah, it's just a bunch of you know random things. I got the South Park guys autograph on this thing right here. This is, it used to be all five of me and my brothers making the cartoons. That's when we started doing the stuff in 2015. So this is the first show we made that was on YouTube and got picked up by Comedy Central. So me and all my brothers' signatures are on here. So I got the South Park creators, me and my brothers. So I got the two greatest cartoon creators ever on my wall. And then I I got a Star Wars thing. I got a Michael Jordan thing. I got a little LeBron thing, Spider-Man, little Duff beer can from The Simpsons. 
um, this water company. They sponsor our podcast. <laughs> is that the nice. from The Simpsons in the back bottom there? That is actually there. There's an artist named Cause who um, designs these things, and he has he has tall ones too. They're like four feet tall. They're like thousands of dollars. Um, but yeah, so that's it's it's just called the Cause Companion. So that's what that is. And then I don't know if you can see on your screen, but then next to that, there's a little. That's a photo of my grandparents from way back in the day. Oh no, I can't see it, but that's sweet. I can see. It. I got it. Yeah, right in. There you go. Oh. All right. So before. Yeah. Ashley, what baseball player in the past 20 years did you pick for? <laughs> uh, what he said. <laughs> hey, that's, that's the correct answer. That is the correct answer, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, I defer to him when it comes to baseball. <laughs> so tell us again, so all, all of your sites, everything can be found through uh, Riot Comedy? Yeah, everything, all of our social handle, handles are Riot Comedy, riotcomedy.com for the extra raunchy stuff. Um, the Korma is KormaCafe.com. It's Korma Cafe on all the social handles. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where to find us. And my personal is Trenton Hudson, if anyone if anyone cares for the personal. Trenton Hudson everywhere. Instagram is probably the only one I use, um, actually, personally. Everything else is just business-wise, but my personal Instagram. So, But people do hit me up every now and again asking about the cartoons or, you know, I heard you on this podcast. I wanted to learn more about yada yada. So I'm always, I'm always pretty open. DMs? People sliding into <laughs> yeah. your DMs. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm always pretty open. No one ever writes into my DM. So disappointing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You make, want to make, talk? Make, make make cartoons. People will slide into your DMs pitching you terrible ideas That's every the other only day. Only way you're gonna get someone to slide into your DMs every other day. Your... <laughs> people people always pitching us ideas, uh-huh. and sometimes m- most of the time we're just we ignore the pitches. But sometimes we'll just be like, just leave the comedy to us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give us a really basic idea. Lost hey. planet. Every now and again, though, someone will, someone will throw us a gem. Um, our, our comments, our, our fans be so hilarious in our comments mm-hmm. section. Um, <laughs> there, there, there was actually a funny one in it yesterday. So we did an episode. Um, Team USA and Canada played yesterday as just an exhibition match before the Olympics. But in last year's FIBA games, that was basketball. Um, correct. Yeah, we're talking basketball here. So last year's FIBA basketball games, Canada beat USA in the third place game. So the USA didn't get a medal. Canada won bronze. And um, so one of the guys on that team in our cartoons has been like talking mess to Team USA, wearing his bronze medal around. Um, so they played yesterday before this 2024 Olympics. And um, someone said that, the guy who walked in with his bronze medal, someone said LeBron should have shut that down by bringing up that he's got two bronze medals, <laughs> which is a big knock on LeBron, but also it's just hilarious. And I was yeah. like, okay, that's, that's actually funny enough to steal. Like that's actually a super funny, that's funny. joke. And concept you know what? Going there. I've been laughing at a lot recently. So I live in Charleston, South Carolina. So there's a lot of historic sites and I started reading mm-hmm. the reviews on the historic sites and they are right. so funny. The best one I saw there was like a, a civil war um, memorial and somebody wrote, this place needs to be renovated. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That was the, the only one. This the place needs to be renovated. Be, be where it's at. The comments be funnier <laughs> than the post sometimes. Not not a, not a riot comedy though. The comments are never funnier than the post, but some other. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Also, I appreciate you taking the time to talk. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, the Ash- pleasure was all mine. On with us for the first time. Looking forward to many more. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I did check out one of your uh, your website this morning. Trying to be going with twenty second, twenty seven second little cartoons. I didn't watch that. It was it? Yeah. I, so I look forward to Good. seeing nice. some kind of following your best forms. And uh, I'm going to the website. I'm skipping the. Uh... Go, go, go to go to the website. Email me. I'll, I'll give you a login password so you can so you can watch this stuff. Yeah, for free. Dude, want premium access. I'm like, I don't have time to access. Like, no, over. I got you. I got you. I'll I'll, 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 I'll I'll slide y'all a secret code so you can log in. Well, can you slide my DMs with the code that way someone slides oh, I'm gonna in? Slide in your, I'm gonna slide in your DMs with a special offer. Yes. <laughs> to Eddie to me, this is wonderful. But try right, best of luck with everything. Enjoy oh, the time. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, Appreciate thank you. you thanks for listening to adeptus on air 
If you like this episode, please subscribe and leave a review. The views and opinions by the podcast speakers and guests are solely their own and do not reflect the opinions of Adeptus. This podcast provides general information only and is not intended to constitute advice.